Hey guys, Enders here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, Season 4's first pretty substantial update. Just for clarity's sake, this update is not out yet. It will most likely be out on Tuesday next week. This is the first substantial update of Season 4. Unfortunately, this update does not include the discarded rework that will come in the next update in Season 4. So that is probably about three weeks away, four weeks perhaps. One thing I do want to mention up front is I'll be playing in a $20,000 tournament for a game called Gundam Evolution on April 22nd. We came second in the last $20,000 tournament, and this time things are going to be different. We're coming for first place. We're coming for the big $20,000. Now, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and let's get right into this update. The first thing DICE mentions is the new mid-season event for Season 4. Apparently it's right around the corner, and you could probably expect all the same things for all of the other mid-season events. There's going to be uh, event-themed cosmetics. You're most likely going to have to play a game mode and complete challenges to unlock these cosmetics. They give us a hint to one of the game modes here, and it says, Will you be able to shut down the Leviathan in time? Not really sure what they're insinuating with that, but maybe this game mode is more ambitious than the other mid-season game modes. The content for this update is three vault weapons being moved over from Portal into the base game. That's nothing new, but we all knew it was coming eventually, ladies and gentlemen. The dreaded and infamous AEK-971 is finally making its return to Battlefield 2042's base game. I can already hear a faint cry of Battlefield 4 PTSD in the distance. I wonder how long it's going to take until I'm called an AEK noob, even though the AEK, I anticipate at least, will be a pretty mediocre assault rifle in comparison to the RM-68 and SCAR, but I just think it's going to be funny because I really do think the AEK is that infamous to where it, it might not be that great, but people are still going to say something because it's the AEK. Now, the two other vault weapons they're adding are the RPK-74M and the MP443. The MP443 might be uh, some fan favorites of some people. I know Matimio is probably very excited uh, of this, because I, I vividly remember Matimio loving his MP443. And the RPK-74M, I'm personally excited for because it says right here that this is going to have the fastest reload speed in the entire LMG class. I personally hope that the RPK-74M has a uh, beefier damage model, maybe one similar to the SCAR because I do anticipate this weapon to be fairly low rate of fire. Moving on to some of the changes in this update now, first of all we have a long-awaited overhaul. The IBA armor plate is seeing some pretty important changes. Now I'm fully aware that uh, a lot of people hate armor in Battlefield 2042, but I'm kind of of the opinion that I don't necessarily think it matters that much. However, this change does actually make a ton of sense. Right now in Battlefield 2042, if you put a piece of armor on your chest, it will protect you from getting headshot, which makes absolutely no idea. They are changing that, and basically it's not going to protect you from headshots anymore. The funniest thing about this change to me is that they actually state in the patch notes that this change is a result of player feedback, but did they really need player feedback for them to understand that a piece of armor you put on your chest doesn't protect your head? I would certainly hope not. Now moving on to the general and gameplay improvement section, they have added multiple new ways of earning experience by completing certain tasks, such as reviving someone within an objective area. They made a few changes to movement. They reduced the traversal sprint delay when barging through doors. That delay they're speaking of is after you barge the door, the delay from you actually being able to get your weapon up is now shorter, which is great. Uh, you will now be able to actually slide through closed doors now to open them, which should be very interesting for close quarters combat. And a bit of a vague change here to the movements, they fixed an issue that would sometimes result in sliding, gaining unintended acceleration. Not exactly sure what they're talking about because I slide all the time and I, I don't really necessarily notice, you know, vast amounts of acceleration. So hopefully they didn't like ruin the movement there a little bit, but we'll see. For you completionists out there that want to tier 1 every single specialist in the game, they have made changes to specialist mastery challenges, and a lot of them is just dice reducing the amount of kills you have to get with a certain thing with these specialists. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this, because you're kind of just ruining the point of mastering something. Shouldn't it take a long time? Like, comment down below if you agree with me. 
In the audio section, a bunch of miscellaneous bug fixes. A lot of these I don't even know how they would even identify as a bug, but hey, they're fixed now. Uh, in the gadget section, they have actually updated a lot of the tool tips and tutorials in the main menu, so if you're struggling to understand how a gadget works, I guess you can go back and watch that now. Smoke grenades can now explode underwater for some reason, and multiple changes made to the M18 Claymore's functionality. Moving on to the specialist section, some big changes to Casper drones, actually. Casper's recon drone now deals damage to Claymore, C5, anti-tank grenades, and proximity sensors. So Casper's drone has unbelievable utility, and if you didn't know you can help destroy things for your team, now you do. Falk's one patch note in this entire thing is very hilarious to me. Apparently, before this patch, you could actually heal the robot dog with your Surrette pistol as Falk. I was not aware you could do this, but you certainly should not be able to do that, and I am very glad they're fixing it. Moving on to the weapons section, the M240B now has the correct headshot multiplier of 2x. For whatever reason, whenever they port vault weapons over, they just cannot get the headshot multipliers correct. And in a very controversial change to sniper rifles, sniper rifles now have a spread penalty while moving. In my opinion, this is not needed in a game like Battlefield 2042. I just don't think it's compatible with the way Battlefield 2042 sniping is in this game. I do think you need to be able to move a little bit at least and be accurate with snipers, just considering the way the game plays. So I, I don't agree with this change at all. And last, and probably least, unfortunately, in the vehicle section, a bunch of miscellaneous changes that are so miscellaneous, I don't even feel like reading a single one of them, because none of them actually matter. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders, and $20,000 tournament April 22nd and April 23rd. We're coming for that $20,000. We're gonna win that shit, we're gonna win it for the boys, and for the people that watched the video till this point, you will know exclusively that I have stuff to give away for you guys very, very soon. So keep an eye on the YouTube community tab and make sure to turn notifications on so you do not miss uh, my posting the giveaway winners or posting any new content because if you want to be a part of the giveaway, it's going to be for YouTube only. So make sure notifications are on. I will see you guys later.